this is introduction to structures. Uh, from now, uh, I will provide presentations where I will explain uh, several exercises based on the introduction of the concepts we did before in the seven uh, previous videos. So in this case, we are going to resolve uh, the problem number one, which is reactions, shear forces, and bending moments for a cantilever beam. In the first place, I'm going to present what is the, exactly the problem. The problem is a cantilever beam with a fixed uh, support at the at the at the left at the left stream, at the at the left ends of the beam, and is subjected to several, or more precisely, three different punctual loads, 19 kilonewton at two meter of the fixed support coming down, 50 kilonewton at four meters from the left support and 20 kilonewtons coming down as well, five meters from the fixed uh, support. So we have a combination of three different um, punctual loads. Two of them are negative, 90 kilonewton and 20 kilonewton, and one of them is positive because it's going up following the definition of our conventions, if you remember. So, um, in the first place, to resolve a problem like this, what we need to do is we need to introduce the directions of the reaction we expect to have depending on the supports in our beam. In this case, because it's a cantilever beam, we expect to have an horizontal reaction H, a vertical reaction B, and a reactive moment M. In order to establish the value of the horizontal reaction H, we are going to use the equation of equilibrium that say that the summation of forces in the horizontal direction are equal to zero. In this particular exercise, because there is no any horizontal action, evidently the horizontal reaction will be zero because there is no, there is no force to react against it. So, Basically, mathematically, we say that the summation of forces in the horizontal direction is just H, the only force we, we have, and have to be equal to zero because there is no any other, any other horizontal force. So first, uh, a reaction is equal to zero, the horizontal one. In order to establish the value of the vertical reaction for this exercise, we're going to write the summation of forces in the vertical direction. And this has to be equal to zero by the equilibrium, the principle of equilibrium. The first force in the vertical direction we have is the vertical reaction we expect is going to be up. And this is the reason why it's positive in our equation. So V is positive. Minus 90, because, uh, which is the first force acting on the, on, the, on the beam and it's negative because it's coming down. Plus 50 kilonewton, positive because it's going up and minus 20 kilonewton, which is coming down as well. Rearranging this simple equation, we can find that V is equal to 90 minus 50 plus 20, which is 60 kilonewtons. And now we know that the horizontal reaction for this beam is zero. The vertical reaction is 60 kilonewtons. In order to establish the value of the reactive moment at the point A, the point A is the point where we have the fixed support applied, we are going to use the third equation of equilibrium that say that the summation of moments around a point A, for example, it has to be equal to zero. So in order to do that, we start analyzing the moments around the point A. We see in the immediately that H and V do not produce any moment because they are passing through the point. So there is no any perpendicular distance providing moments against this point for these two forces. We have the moment M in this anti-clockwise direction. We expect that the reaction will have this direction. We don't know a priori, but this is what is our assumption. And for this reason, this, this moment is negative in our convention because it's anti-clockwise. And this is the reason why in the equation appear as a negative. Minus M is the, the reactive moment in here. We don't know yet its value. The next moment around the point A is 90 kilonewton times two meters, the perpendicular distance to the force. And this, is, uh, ter this term is positive because it's close wise. It is to say the rot rotation produced by 90 kilonewtons around the point A is positive. It's following the, the, the movement of the clock. 
The next moment is produced by 50 kilonewtons, 50 kilonewtons times 4 meters to the point A, but negative in this occasion because it's anti-clockwise. The rotation produced by 50 kilonewtons around A is anti-clockwise. Finally, the moment produced by 20 kilonewtons is 20 kilonewtons times 5 meters, the distance to A, and it's positive because it's clockwise again. All of this, all the summation of these four moments has to be equal to zero because this is what the principle of equilibrium says. And then rearranging this equation, passing this M negative in here to the other member as a positive, we have that the moment at the point A, the reactive moment at the point A will be 90 times 2 minus 50 times 4 plus 20 times 5, which is equal to 80 kilo, kilo newton per meter. And this is the third reaction for this uh, cantilever beam. So now we can uh, sketch the free body diagram with the resolved reactions. And as we see, H is equal to zero. So we delete it directly. We have a reacted moment of 80 kilonewton per meter in the anti-clockwise direction. And we have a vertical reaction going up equal to 60 kilonewtons on this cantilever being subjected to these three punctual forces. The next step in the resolution of this beam is the determination of the shear forces uh, in every cross section. And for doing that, we are going to sketch the shear force diagram. In order to do that, we are going to use a coordinate system uh, Y and Z with origin of coordinates in the point A, where we have applied the fixed support. So we are going to study this beam in several intervals. The first one is the interval between zero and two meters. So in this interval, if we are positioned, for example, in the middle, we see that the summation of forces, the shear forces, summation of shear forces to the left of this cross section in the middle, for example, is only 60 kilonewtons because it's the only shear force that appeared to the left side of the structure. The moment doesn't come because the moment is not a force, it's a moment. And the only force in the direction of the shear forces, which are vertical for this particular beam, are only 60 kilonewton, and 60 kilonewton is positive because it's going up. So the shear force at this interval is equal to 60 kilonewtons. And we can uh, sketch the reference lines, the neutral axis of our beam. And after that, we can sketch as well the value 60 kilonewtons. And this line represents that the shear force will be constant in this interval from zero to two because the only force we have to the left in every single cross section <coughs> of this interval is equal to 60 kilonewtons. The next um, interval to analyze is the interval from two to four. So we are positioned now in the middle of this interval. And in this case, if we are here, we have that the shear force is 60 kilonewtons, the reaction we have to the left of the cross section we are analyzing in here, minus 90 kilonewton, because it's negative because it's coming down. And the result of this shear force is minus 30 kilonewtons. So in the interval from two to four, the shear force is minus 30 kilonewtons. And we can represent that in our, uh, bending, uh, in our shear force diagram uh, as is shown in the screen. So we have minus 30 now. So we are sketching this um, at the bottom of our reference line because it's negative, it's opposite to the, the positive value we had before. And this horizontal line here represents that the shear force will be constant from two to four as is clear uh, to see if you position yourself in every cross section in this interval. The only two forces you have to the left is 60 minus, 30, minus 90, which is equal to minus 30. The next interval is the interval between four and five. So we are here now in the middle of these two forces, 50 kilonewtons and 20 kilonewtons. And now to the left of this cross section, the uh, shear force is 60 kilonewtons, the reaction minus 90, the force coming down, plus 50, this force uh, going up. During the operation, we have 20 kilonewtons as a value of shear force in the interval from four to five. This is the way we are going to represent this, uh, uh, this value. So this horizontal line represent, uh, means exactly the same as before. The shear force is constant between these two forces. Finally, if we analyze what happened in the interval from five to six, so we are here now in the extreme, in the right extreme of the cantilever beam, we see that the summation of 
shear force is 60 minus 90 plus 50 minus 20 is equal to zero. And this happened from five to six, all along this last um, uh, interval in this cantilever beam. And this can be represented in the, uh, bending, in the shear force diagram as you can see in the screen. So the signs we are going to assign to these, uh, uh, to these shear forces are positive when they are um, uh, produced by positive forces and negative when they are produced by negative forces. So this is our shear force diagram for this cantilever beam. Uh, another thing that uh, needs to be mentioned here is that when we have beams with only punctual loads, uh, we expect to have um, shear forces diagram that are formed by constant functions like this. So we have basically four different constant functions in here. We have the function 60 constant in this interval from 0 to 2, minus 30 from 2 to 4, 20 from 4 to 5, and 0 from 5 to 6. This is because we have only punctal loads applied on the structure. The next step to resolve this exercise is the calculation of the moments and the bending moment diagram. So we are going to do that um, in the next. So the first point I'm, I'm going to, to, to mention is the z equal to zero. So we are in the origin of coordinating here. And it, the moment in there is equal to zero kilogram, uh, kilonewton per meter. And this is normal because remember we did the summation of forces it, at the point in this uh, particular category, it has to be equal to zero by equilibrium. If we go immediately after this point A in here, so we are a little bit after, to the left of the structure, we are going to have the moment, this punctual moment applied, which is the reactive moment of the beam. So immediately after um, Z equal to zero, we are going to have minus 80 kilonewton per meter. So this has to be uh, Z greater than zero instead of one. This is a mistake. So because we are here, we are not at one or even uh, after, we are exactly here, after, after zero. So at this particular point, we have a moment equal to minus 80 kilonewton per meter. And we can represent this in our bending moment diagram as a line, vertical line coming from the reference line and on top, because it's negative, this is our convention for moments. And we can go to the next point. If we go to the point two, we are here under the load 90 kilonewtons, Z is equal to two. So the moment at this point will be minus 80 kilonewton per meter, the moment, the reactive moment, plus 60 kilonewton times two meters, because 60 is positive, then producing positive rotation around the point under the low 90 kilonewtons is close wise moment. So this is the reason why it's positive. And if we do the operation, the moment at this particular point is equal to 40 kilonewtons. So it's a positive moment. We can sketch this positive moment under the reference lines because this is what we do uh, following our conventions. And now, because we have two values and we have uh, only punctual loads, we know that the variation of the, bond, the bending moment diagram will be linear, so we can connect this minus 80 kilonewton per meter with this 40 kilonewton per meter, generating this uh, um, linear function and generating this portion of the bending uh, moment diagram. The next interval, or this no interval, the next point in this case, because uh, for bending moment we go point by point, we don't analyze interval by interval, so. When Z is equal to four, we are here under the force 50 kilonewtons. The moment is minus 80 kilonewton per meter, the reactive moment plus 60 kilonewton times four meter, positive because it's close wise, and minus 90 times two uh, meters because, uh, and negative because it's anti-close wise. If we do the operation of this moment, we found that the moment is minus 20 kilonewton per meter, it's negative again. And we can represent this moment with this line on top of the reference line, the, the neutral axis of our, our beam. And we can connect now 40 with minus 20 because there is nothing, there, there are only punctual forces and we expect or we know that the distribution of the moment will be linear. So this is the second part of the bending moment diagram. The next point to be analyzed is the Z equal to five. So we are under 20 kilonewtons now, this force, the last force of the structure 
And the moment in here is minus 80 kilonewton, the reactive moment is always negative, plus 60 times 5, positive because it's close by, minus 90 times 3, negative because it's anti clockwise and 50 times 1, which is positive because it's clockwise again around the point five, uh, at z equal to 5. If we do the calculation, we found that the moment is zero at this point. So at this point, the diagram will be zero and we can connect zero with minus 20, generating the last portion of the bending moment diagram. Uh, we know that this uh, portion of the moments are negative, this portion of the moment are positive, and these portions are negative again. And this is what we call the bending moment diagram. Now, uh, to, uh, to end this uh, presentation, I wanted to show you uh, the both diagram, the bending moment diagram and the shear of four diagrams together, because this is what you usually uh, look for when we do this sort of analysis. So we have the uh, initial um, extractor, the cantilever beam, subjected to three different um, punctual loads. We calculated the reaction first, so we know the horizontal reaction is zero. It's clearly represented in here in this diagram. The vertical reaction is going up and is equal to 60 kilonewtons. The reactive moment is 80 kilonewton per meter. This is the distribution of the bending moments along the beam. So we know that we start with 80, we diminish this until zero for this cross section in here. After we, dis uh, we, um, we reach the value of 40 kilonewton positive. After we reach another uh, peak in here is minus 20 kilonewton per meter as a moment. So the distribution is linear because as I said before, we have only punctual low. We are going to see other examples where the distribution of the, the distribution of the moment is uh, follow other functions. And the distribution of the shear forces is constant. And again, I will uh, mention the relationship between the bending moment uh, functions and the shear force functions. If you remember in previous videos, I mentioned that the derivative of the bending moments are the shear forces. If you have a linear distribution in here, the derivative of a linear function is a constant function. And this is the reason why from here to here, you have a linear, a linear in the first interval from zero to two, you have a linear distribution of the bending moment. And as a consequence, you have a constant distribution of the shear force because it's the derivative. The same thing happened in the interval from two to four linear distribution of bending moment, constant distribution of shear forces, and from four to five as well, linear distribution of bending moment, constant distribution of shear forces. In the last interval from five to six, the distribution of the bending uh, moments are zero, so the derivative is zero as well. And this is the reason why these two functions are um, y equal to zero, basically. Okay, this is all, and thank you very much.